Uh, good afternoon, uh, all, or good afternoon, good evening, from wherever you are joining. I welcome you to the R4DS Book Club. I hope you can all see my screen, or am I am am I'm, I'm also audible for? Okay. So what we do in the Alpha Data Science uh, Book Club, I think this book was uh, written uh, with the book down package in R. It was put together by John uh, John the Geek. He put together this book. So the, though this evening we have a conversation in the Slack uh, because he was expected, he was supposed to join the first session of uh, cohort seven. So we had a conversation this evening in the Slack. So he said he was unable to join this first uh, meeting. So the R4DS, uh, the book in which we are viewing is available uh, in this uh, link, the r4ds.io, r4ds. You can have access uh, to the book. But the R4 data science, uh, what we do is that we they have uh, a code, a code of conduct. I think I should quickly run through the code of conduct. Can you all see which screen are you seeing? Can you all see the screen for the code of conduct? Hello? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay, okay. So in the code of conduct for the R4DS is that it says in the interest of fostering an open and welcoming environment, we as learners, mentors, and administrators pledge to make participation in our community and harassment free experience for everyone, regardless of age, body size, disability, ethnicity, gender, identity, and expression, level experience, nationality, personal experience, race, religion, and sexual identification and orientation. So based on the standard, he said, examples of behavior that contribute to creating a positive environment include using welcoming and inclusive language, being respectful of individual in of different viewpoints and experiences, gracefully accepting constructive criticism, focusing on what is best for the community, showing empathy towards other community members. So this, this code of conduct, because if you look at the Slack, I think the code of conduct, the book uh, is already there. Maybe we can also look at others so that I will not waste uh, much time. So, I should go over to the second slide before we start our introduction proper. So the book club, what we do is that each week, a volunteer will present a chapter from the book because we believe that this is the best way to learn the material in the book. It's actually, if you go back, you pick each chapter, you go and study the chapter and you come and make a presentation. We believe that model, uh, you discover that uh, you have really learned a lot in this process because that is how you develop uh, uh, your skill. Because if you go back and take the material, you go and practice, you come and make a presentation. I think we believe that is the best way to learn the material. Presentation will usually consist of a review of the material, a discussion or a demonstration of the principle presented in, the, in that chapter. And more information is available in the GitHub repo of the book. This is the GitHub repo. If you click on this link, all this link, once you click on it, it will take you directly to the GitHub repository where you can find the source code in which they use in compiling this book. So presentation will be recorded and will be made available on the R4DS online learning community YouTube channel. This is the YouTube channel. If you click on the link, so if you, in case you want to make a presentation for your own talk, maybe you are to present on a specific chapter, you can visit the YouTube channel to see what other courts, what people have done specific to those chapters, you can review it, then you come forward with your own uh, talk, your own presentation and to make. So with this, before I go into uh, the introduction of the book, I uh, would like us, uh, because I would like to know each and every one first, I will start the introductory part from my side. So I will introduce myself proper so that we get to know each other before I proceed. Uh, as, as, my name is uh, Oluwafemi 
Oyedele. I'm a Nigerian. I hold a master's degree in agrometrology from the University of Ibadan here in Nigeria. I'm currently a research fellow at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture here in Ibadan in Nigeria. So the floor is open, whoever wants to take uh, the floor. Hello, Hi, everyone. Going? Yes. Okay, my name is Michael Ehimoro, and I, I am currently a master's student at the University of Ibado. I study clinical psychology, and I am hoping to um, make use of R for statistical analysis in my field. So that's why I uh, decided to join this cohort. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Evening. Um, yes, I'm Betsy Murevi. I am a research fellow at ILAB Africa, a research center in Strathmore University. Um, I'm in Nairobi, Kenya. Welcome. Who is going next? Uh, is it? Hello? Uh, Hello, who is going next? We are in the introductory section. We want to get to know each other. Okay, uh, my name is Gerard. I'm from the Netherlands. And uh, my background is civil engineering. I work as a consultant in the Netherlands and I'm working for data analysis for about 15 years, but I would like to know more about uh, R, especially in data science. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Dolin Osundwa. I'm from Kenya. Uh, I did my undergraduate in biostatistics and I'd like to continue learning R. So I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, welcome. Same Thank with you. you. We still have, I think, uh, Fetz Mohammed. We still have Fetz Mohammed, Olu Kunle, and who again? Is that all? I think we still have some people that are yet to introduce themselves. Okay, so, so that we'll not waste uh, much time. So let's go into what we have for, for today. Let me zoom in a little bit. Can you all see my screen or should I still zoom in a little bit? I hope my zoom is clear. We, we can see your screen. Okay, okay. Let me zoom in a little bit so that in case. Okay, so we are with today as we did I this course, I'll be presenting on chapter one of the book. The, and the introduction gives an overview of what the book covers. So in the learning objective of this chapter, it said describe a typical data science project. Then we are going to explain the reasoning behind the order of content in this book. Then we are going to recognize topics that are explicitly not covered by, the book, by this book. Then we are going to set up an environment in which 
you can learn the topics in this book. Then we'll describe how code in the book differs from code in your console. Then we are going to recall ways to get help with the R code by producing a minimal uh, reproducible example or reflex as. So we go in a bit because this is the main part. Let me go in a bit. What's I'm sorry. I'm trying to zoom in a bit. Okay, let's be let it be like this. Because this is a summary of the entire book, what the book entails. So typically in every project, in every typical data science project, uh, we all normally start uh, with imports. We need to what import our data sets because we believe we have data set that is stored in a file. It can be stored in a database. It can be stored in a, a web API. So we, the main idea is for us to what bring this data set loaded into our a data frame in R, because it is believed that if we cannot bring in our data set and into R, then we can't do any data science. We can't do any data science within this with our data set. So that is the first concept in the book, because this model in which Adley proposes, it has become a main standard. Maybe in other discussion forum, even in Python, they have also adopted this same standard, this same model for data science. So after data imports, the book goes into tidy because tidy means what transforming our data sets into a more consistent format. Because early he do publish a paper uh, that was uh, released in the Journal of Statistical Computing where he talk about uh, tidy data, a data set, and he talk about the, the, the format in which every data set need to follow where he said a tidy data is a data in which every column should be a variable, then every row should be an observation, every cell should be a, a value, and this gives us a, a table. Because if it's, it's be, been expected that if we have a data set in this format, it will be easy for you to visualize, it will be easy for you to model, it will also be easy for you to transform. So, if once we are true, but if your but majority of the data sets in which we receive as an analyst or researcher doing work with data is that is you hardly get data sets that are tidy. So, but there are tools, there are functions in R within the tidy R package in which we can use in transforming this data, making this data set uh, to be tidy. So after the tidy tidying our data sets. The next step in which the book explains is what trans data transformation. And this data transformation, what are we uh, talking about? Is is simply referring us to uh, reducing these uh, data sets into a specific variable of interest that will be help, help us to explain uh, our research question. So we are trying to reduce this data set into a specific variable, uh, like maybe doing some groups groups, then we do some summary statistics to see how we reduce this data to a specific variable that will help us to answer our research questions in which we have in hand. So what the book discusses is that if you sum tidy and transformation, if you bring these two concepts together, that is what they call data wrangling. Because it's been, it's been expected that 80 to 90% of the time as an analyst working with data, you spend 80 to 90% of your time doing data wrangling. Because if you want to be an effective analyst or data scientist, you need to have a strong background in data wrangling because this is where the bulk of the time is spent in, in doing wrangling. So the book also explained that if you have a tidy data, 
He also explained if you have a tidy data, uh, what is the next step? So the next step for knowledge generation is for us to either we do visualization or modeling. So that is what the book discuss. Because every data analysis, we are going to iterate between data visualization and modeling in every effective analysis. So you need to iterate between data visualization and modeling. So in data visualization here, yeah, because we might have a specific research question in which we are asking. But when we do go into data visualization, a data visualization might show us specific things in which we never expect from our own data set. Might show us interesting trends in which we might even go back to what? To tell ourselves maybe we were not asking the right question. We can even modify our hypothesis. Uh, at that instant, we can modify our hypothesis. So after visualizing, the book also explain, talk about modeling, that if you have the right answer, if you have the right question, then, and our data set is tidy, we can use model to answer that question. The book discusses that, yes, we can use a model to answer our specific research question that we have in hand. So in summary of this process is that if we have if we have been able to use visuals, we have been able to use visualization, visuals and model to understand our own data sets. So for us to be very effective in that process, we need to be able to what, communicate our findings more effectively to stakeholders. So if we cannot do this, then, then the job is not yet done as a data scientist, because as a data scientist, you have done your visuals, you have done your modeling. If, no matter how you have been, this visual and model has helped you to understand your data. So for this to be effective, you need to be able to what, communicate. And the book talk about there are tools in which the book recommend using the R markdown. But this now, the, the latest tools in which are, has been released, I think is a quarto. But the book is still talking about R markdown, but I want to also know, that uh, there is a new tool called Quato, which is, which is also open source that is just developed uh, by, by our studio. So in summary of this, in summary, the summary of all this that I just said is about what surround all this is program that the book talk about. Because for us to be an effective analyst, for us to be able to automate tax with ease to achieve greater uh, results, we need to be able to what program because this for you to be an effective analyst or data scientist, you need to learn to program because program will help you to what automate a lot of tasks. It's going to help you to automate a lot of tasks to achieve a result with greater ease. And in the aspect of programming in which the book introduced, the book will introduce us to the applied family of functions. We will look at loops. Then, then we now go into a more vectorized operation using the poor package. So that is that is what uh, the book uh, discuss about. So in case uh, as we are going, in case there is anything that is not clear, feel free to stop me. Feel free to interrupt me uh, at any point. I think this is just a summary of uh, the first section, which talk about uh, the typical data science project. Because this is, if you understand, uh, if you understand this concept in which Harley presents here, means that you already understand this book because this is a summary of entire what uh, we'll be looking at uh, in the entire book because it's around 36 chapter. I think this is a summary of the entire book. So in the next part, I think here, we are going to the order of the content of this book. We are going to talk about the order of the content of the book. So in the first part, hardly the, the book discussed that imports and tidy are boring. It do explain that importing and tidying data are boring. So the book jumped into what that visualization and transformation. So why Hadley does this that he assumed that we already have a data set in which we have imported. He also assumed that that data set, we have tidy up that data set. So the NAM jumped straight into visualization. 
So after visualization, they now go, the book now go back to do data transformation. So that is the concept because it's believed that if you are able to do visualization and you see the is and you, it will draw your interest to want to dig in more, to study, to learn more in other areas, in other chapters. So the book starts with data visualizations, then we now go into data transformation. And after that, we learn rank up, that is import and tidy, because that is a necessary skill. So after that, the book talk about data wrangling, which is the import and tidy in which we skip in the first part. We now begin to discuss that concept. Then after that, the book talk about those baseline skills enable us to start programming, learning to program, help us simplify other steps because the learning to program, this is a very important as, uh, aspect of the book because programming, as I said earlier, it will help us to do what, to automate a lot of tasks in order for us to achieve uh, results uh, with uh, greater ease. We might then get into modeling and communication, but I just simply want to chip in something here because if you check the current edition of the book, they are for data science book, the current edition in which is still under, in which they are actively working on now. They drop modeling from the current edition. Modeling has been dropped from the current edition of the book. Um, they drop modeling, but they do recommend that if you want to learn more on modeling, because there is a book called Tidy Modeling in R, it also obey the Tidyverse principles. So, and that book is, is written by Max Kuhn, and Julio Silge. So they do recommend that if you want to learn more about modeling, so you, you consult a, the tidy model book. So the book also end with communicating or we might pick those up in books that are more specific devoted to those because there is a book down book. I think the quarter is still under development. There's not yet a book yet, but if you look at uh, the hashtags on Twitter, people post uh, a lot about uh, Quato these days. So the book also in 1.3, we also look at topics uh, that are not covered in this book. So the book did not, they will not, will not be looking at the big data. So big data, so what we'll be considering is data that is going to fit in the memory of our, uh, of our computer. So we won't be talking about big data in this book. So the mainly data will be looking at maybe between one to two gigabytes. But if you have data between 10 to 100 uh, gigabytes, the book do uh, encourage that you learn more about uh, data.table because data.table is on a different syntax. It's a different syntax. The book re re do recommend that we learn about data.table and also Sparkly R package. We learn more about Sparkly R in order for us to handle uh, this uh, data set, the big data. So the next step about uh, the next bullet point there, we talk about programming. So the only program we will, we will not be looking at Python, Julia, and the other programming language. Not that these languages are not important. Yes, this language, they are, they, are, they are all important, but it's better for us to master one skill before we think about learning other skill. So that is a concept in which only uh, this uh, explain in the book that is better for us to master one skill. If you have mastered that skill, then we now think about learning other skill. So that is the idea. Also, non-rectangular data. Honestly, even a lot of things that aren't naturally table-like can be quasi to table-like, so that it makes sense to start with tables, because so that we can quasi this thing to like maybe like our image data sets. We can. We can use tools within the Tidyverse to work with it, bring it to a tabular format in order for us to proceed with our analysis. So in the last bullet talk about hypothesis confirmation. This book does not discuss about hypothesis confirmation. It only focus on exploratory data analysis. That is what we learn with focus on this book because So this part uh, 1.4 talking about, it talks about setting up, setting up our, setting up our environments. 
That's what we are using in this book. We need to have R installed. And if you do not have R installed, for you to install R, you need to go to CRAN. Once you just type CRAN, it will take you. Can you all see if you type CRAN, it will take you to the comprehensive Araka network where you can just pick uh, the specific version. If you are using a Linux, download R for Linux. If you are using a Mac, or if you are using a Windows, so you download R uh, for Windows. So the next thing in which uh, the book talk about is R Studio. And R Studio for you, to, if you just use your Google, just say R Studio, R Studio. It will take you to just search the web, R Studio, R Studio ID. You click on this. It will show us. We can see our studio, which is the free version for us to download. All these, they are all, this is also free. This ones, they have paid version, but this is a, you download your house studio. Then the tools in which we'll be using, we'll be using the tidyverse package, which is a collection of package, which is a collection of uh, packages in which we use in doing data analysis in R. So if you are interested in the, the, the stable version of tidyverse, you use install.package, then tidyverse, which will download the app, it's going to download all the tidyverse packages. Then if you load the library, it's going to load the eight core tidyverse packages. But if you, are, if, you are, if you are interested in the development version, because the development version of tidyverse that is, that, that is currently on CRAN, they, they have had it duplicate package. So if you are using the remotes to install tidyverse from the GitHub, so you are going to have, then if you load library tidyverse, then that means you are going to have nine core tidyverse packages that you will load on your machine. Because the development version of tidyverse, hardly they just added uh, lubridates as one of the core tidyverse package that is on GitHub. So if you are using that approach, and you load library tidyverse, you are going to have access uh, to nine core tidyverse packages. The book also talk about uh, three other additional packages, which is NYC Flight 13, the Gapminder, and the Lehman package that we'll be using. Uh, so the book also discusses about running R code. So here I want to switch to the book so that you can really see what I mean by this section running R code. Let me switch. Hello, can you all see which version of, can you see the latest book? Hello? Yes. Okay, okay. Let me screw down. Okay, introduction. Where is it? Running R code. Big data. Uh, R Studio, we are through with this. Okay, same way I am here. So the book talk about the running an R code. So in the book, you will see maybe we have a number we are doing addition one plus two. You are going to have the hash sign, which is for comments in R. Then you are going to have a greater than symbol. The greater than symbol there is the command prompt in R. Then you are going to have the result. So why Adley does this is that in case you are reading the online version of the book, you can easily come here and copy this code and paste in your console and easily run it without any issue. So that is how that is why they do it this way. They put the ask sign, the prompt, then the result. Then if you are running this code in your console, this is what you are going to get. Because we type our code in our console after the prompt, after the command prompt, which is this greater than sign. We have one plus two, then we are going to get uh, the results, which is three. 
and it's going to index is index one, then the result is three. So let me switch back uh, to the book so that I can continue with my, so that is what the book uh, discover running code. In this book, it said it's slightly different from what running this in your console. So we need to take note of that when we are working with the book because you can just grab any code from the book, paste it in your console and just run. They make it easy. So in this section, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, getting help. I don't know from if there are any questions up to this point so that I can address before going to getting help. Any question, any comments, any contribution? Hello? Question, comments, or contribution is welcome. Or should I proceed? Hello? I'm still here. Okay, so I should go ahead. Yes, thank so, you. So, so the book talk about uh, getting help. So first of all, he said we should pay attention to error messages because normally when you are working in R, you can encounter any error. Maybe you are trying to run some specific uh, line of code, you can get an error. So the first step in which we do is that we copy that error message, we can paste it in our Google and do and run. So once you paste that error message in Google and run, likely someone has encountered similar problem. So you might see the way in which the person was able uh, to fix uh, that problem. I think it will give you a cue of what is going on and how you are going to fix that particular uh, issue. Then he also said that if you can't figure out what an error is telling you, copy and paste in Google, which I've also said, because Google can help you. And one other very good website in which, uh, every, in which you can really get help is Stack Overflow. But in Stack Overflow is that when you go to Stack Overflow, this is the website stackoverflow.com. There are a lot of questions in which others People have asked and they have responded to those questions. So you must also ensure that you spend time to go through all those questions in which people have asked. They might be similar question to the one in which you are trying to ask. Because if you ask the same question, nobody has time to just come back and answer you. Somebody might just say the, the answer to this question is up there. You'll be asking, where is the answer? So it's better you, you take time to do your search. Go through Stack Overflow, limit your search to R. If it's a specific package, if it is maybe let's say tidyverse or deeply R, you can limit yourself to deeply R. You will discover there is a thread for deeply R. So you begin to go through all the questions in which they have asked in Stack Overflow relating to what you are asking in. So likely you might see a similar person that have similar a problem to yours. So you might be, a, you might look at the way in which he was able, they were able to fix that problem for him. Then you follow through that step to resolve uh, your own issue. But if that, if in the long run, you were unable to get answer to that question, in that case, I will talk about that when I'm explaining the reprex, because we'll see how we can do a reprex. I will explain about that. Or you can also ask question in the Slack because in Slack, all question being asked in the Slack channel, uh, you have response within 24 hours. Group of mentors, they are going to respond. They respond, we respond to all question that is being asked in the Slack. There is no question, there is no question in which you ask in the Slack that you will not get response because Normally, somebody must have gone through that route. So they, we have more experienced people that have, have similar issues, they know. So once you ask, they know how to fix 
uh, that problem. So you can ask good qu question in Slack. People are always there uh, to respond to questions. So when you ask for help, the book say we should make a reprex. A reprex is simply a reproducible code. A reproducible code in which uh, in which we can in this reproducible code is going to have all the libraries, all the packages in which you use, in which you use uh, in doing the analysis, is going to also have the data sets and is going to also have the codes. So that is a standard format to do reprex. So for you to have the data sets, in order for you to do reprex, the book discovered, say you should use the deput function. So let's say, for example, let me, let me share my house studio so that we see one example. Um, which one should, because I have several screen open. So le okay, let me share this one. Okay, you can all see. You can all see my house studio. So let me open a script. Okay, as I was saying that in Reprex, you must have the library, the data sets that you are using to run your Reprex, you must have all the library, the data sets, and, all, and also the codes in which you use in doing the Reprex. But also there is a package in R called Reprex that is developed by Jenny Bryan. And that is a very good package that will guide you through this process. Because in that part, we'll... so as I said, if you do, let's say we have empty cars. If you do deep puts, if you do deep puts on empty cars, which is a package in this, which is a data set that came with R. If you do deep put with MT card, it will give you the skeletal structure of what you can use in creating that data sets. Okay, so what you do is that you copy this. You copy this, but not highlighting. What is this? I hope I have copied all. Yeah, so I will remove the command prompt. Come here. Okay, so you just say, you put your assignment operator there and we call it what? Empty cast. Okay, so what we'll do here, we need to style this code in such a way, make it nice. We need to style it using this. There is a study verse styler package. So we need to style it. No, there is a section for reprex. I just want to demonstrate this now. Once we do this, it's going to control shift A. It's going to format that code in this format. Okay? So if you check here, let me clear here. If you check my environment, there is no data sets. So if I run this now, you discover there is the empty cars data sets here. So you just run this, this is the data sets I just created uh, with my code. This is the empty cars data sets. So, but normally what the book also discusses is that it's better if you're having an issue, use your variable in your data set in which you want to use for your reprex, you reduce it to only those variables of interest. You reduce it to only those variables that, that are of interest to you. You reduce it to those variables of interest. Then also the areas in your code in which you're having issue, you put a comment there. So you put a comment that this is where you're having an issue so that it will be easy for somebody that want to help you to fix this code for you it will be very easy for them to figure out, okay, this is the area, uh, there are issue in this area, 
it will be easy for them to respond and help you fix to fix this problem. So that is what uh, the book uh, discuss in the reflex. Though in the subsequent section, there is a session where there is reflex. I don't know who, who is going to handle that session. So uh, and that session has been expected that you show everything practical because this is just the introductory part of the book. So let me go back to the book. All for data science, I think getting help, we are getting help. Okay, so, so the, the book also says we provide subset of the data that use, we, we have seen how to use the depot function. Make sure your code is easy to read. So we should spend time to make sure that our code is easy for other people to read it. That is, you need to style the code using the, style, the styler package. We style the code so that you make it easy then I, as I also say, any, any part of the code that is not related to the problem is better you remove it from, your, from the reflex. You remove those parts that are not related, even in the, your data set, any variable in the data that are not related to the problem, we need to remove those parts. We we'll let go specific to those areas that are of that are interest, that are leading to the issue. Then I also make your scores use clean spacing, clear variable names, and comment the areas in which they are issued. Another interesting forum in which I want to mention, in which you can easily get help, is the Alstax hashtag on Twitter. Either you, you, you put the hashtag Alstax, Tidy Tuesday, you can easily get help. Somebody might just look at, you ask your people, you ask your question, Using the hashtag ask that somebody might easily come and, and fix your code for you and they might respond to you immediately. So what is there? I think I think that is all for the book. So let me share the Slack. Let me go back to the Slack. Let me go back to the Slack. So if you look at this, is the Slack. This is the Slack. If you look at the Slack, uh, uh, Mr. John, he has pinned some certain resources in the Slack. Like this is the book, the second edition of the R for Data Science. This is the slides in which I am presenting. This is the shared slide. Uh, this, if you are interested in the first edition, you can get it here. This is the first edition. This is the GitHub repo. Then this is the presenter sign up sheets. This is quad seven. This is quad seven. Let me share that. Uh, where is it? Then is this. So what you do is that this is how the club works. Like for today, I'm the one presenting. My name is there. So like for next week, Monday, if you are the one presenting, if you are the one to volunteer to present, you just come here and write your name. So how is it, who is, who is going to be our presenter for Monday? I think the next topic is data visualization. Then the next, we look at workflow basics, data transformation. We look at workflow pipes. It's very simple concept. You just go back and review the material. There's some YouTube video. You are free to use any formats that is, if you want, you are used to PowerPoints, any format. But if you want to stick to the notes, then you stick to the notes, you use the notes and do your presentation. And if you want to be more effective, I strongly encourage you work, uh, you learn how to use uh, GitHub so that you can come, maybe you can download all this, the zip file, you can let me show you. Uh, if you are not that conversant for with GitHub for now, let me show you another approach way in which you can get uh, the material. Where is the book? Where is it? I think this is the book. Uh, this is the book. Okay. 
So this is a book. I think this is it. Uh, where is the GitHub? Put a thumb up, join our fathers and GitHub. Next page. Okay, this is the GitHub repo. So when you come here to the GitHub repo, if you are not, this is how you can get it. You can see code. Can you see where I am? Hello? Yes. Okay, when you click on this code, okay, you will come down. If you are very used to version control, you can just click here and copy this. Then you go to your R studio and you clone this repository. Everything you are getting seen here, you will see it in your machine. But if you are not comfortable with that, the second approach to get this material, you download zip download zip, you download it as a zip file, then you unzip it, you get all the code in your machine so that you can edit it ahead of, uh, and work on it ahead of the, our next meetup next week. So who is going to present next week? Let's have a volunteer for next week because it's belief that is after you, uh, because when you are presenting, that is the best way you can learn the material. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. That is the best way uh, you can learn the material. Who is going to volunteer for next week? But if you have any challenges regarding presentation anyway, you can just feel free uh, to ping me on the Slack. I will help you fix it up. Volunteer, who is volunteering for next week? Hi, I, I don't think I can volunteer for next week because I've got another course on the Monday, so I might be a bit late, but I'll volunteer for the week after. Okay, but for next week, I think it's a very interesting topic, data visualization using ggplot2. But Mr. Tim, what do you just do if you go to the Slack, the GitHub page, uh, go to the Slack sign off, she just fill your name there so that we'll know that, okay, yeah, for, for, for the week after next, yeah. Yes, just fill your name in the sheet, the Google Sheets. Yes, brilliant. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. So who is going for next week? I, I guess if no one is volunteering, I, I guess I will. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Michael. Just fill your name in the Google Sheets in the Slack, then we will see, we'll meet next time on, that is on Monday, the same time. So thank you everyone for, for joining today. If there are any, no question, I think that this will we'll end for today. Well, one question: you, you with the um, you've got R Studio and R Studio Cloud. Are, are they exactly the same? Does it matter which one you use or not? Uh, R Studio Cloud. You know, in R Studio Cloud, is different from R Studio the Cloud version. If you are using the R Studio Cloud, but you can use it in workshop. It's better for workshop, whereby you can do all your code in the cloud. Then you share your workspace with all the participants in the workshop shop. Because at times when you hold holding workshop, you are running some code, there might be conflict because different version, different machine. So some people might run into a conflict. So it's always, that is where uh, some, is very good for us to use the cloud version of our studio. Whether you set up your environments, you only share your workspace uh, with the participants. And with that, you can carry everybody along. Yeah, oh, great, thank you. Welcome. Are there any other questions? So if there is no question, I think we'll, meet, we'll end here for today and we meet, we meet on Monday. Thank you all for joining. We'll meet the same time next week. Yep, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>